Hey everyone, PowerStars321 here with another album review for Ace Alieri's Contest. Come to think of it, last year's contest was the reason I started doing these things. Hmm. Anyways, let's get straight to business. Today, we're talking about the second self-titled album by Weezer, more commonly known as The Green Album. Now after forming in 1992, Weezer released their debut album, commonly known as The Blue Album, in 1994. The three singles, Undone, Buddy Holiday, and Say It Ain't So, became quickly popular, but frontman and main songwriter Rivers Cuomo soon became disillusioned with the rock star lifestyle. After being accepted into Harvard and having his left leg surgically broken, as it was shorter than his right, he began writing a space-themed rock opera. After that failed to come together, he reworked some songs he wrote for it, as well as wrote some new ones, and the resulting album, Pinkerton, near universally considered Weezer's best work and an extremely influential album for the emo genre, for better or for worse, was released. What problem though? When it came out, it absolutely bombed. Fans and critics both hated it, and it drove Weezer to break up for the next five years. The cause of the failure of Pinkerton was a multitude of reasons, from Rivers not wanting any gimmicky music videos, like the kind that helped make them popular, to the first single release from the album being the extremely uncommercial El Scorcho, but either way, this extremely personal and experimental effort failed, and said failure greatly affected Cuomo's songwriting. The band got back together in the late 90s, and in the summer of 2000, demoed many new songs on a small tour, a group of songs that came to be known as the Summer Songs of 2000, appropriately enough. Fans were excited, but when Weezer's comeback album dropped, they were confused. Only one song from the summer of 2000, Hashpipe, made it onto the album. Not only that, but this album was much popular than Pinkerton, or even the Blue album, and also very formulaic. It left the fanbase divided for years to come. Let's talk about why. The album opens with Don't Let Go, an energetic pop tune that was literally banged out in a few minutes. Cuomo himself says he has no idea what the song is supposed to mean. Here is where many of the motifs that define a Green Era song come in. Harmonies by an overdub Cuomo, a guitar solo that follows the vocal melody, which, I might add, seems to be the only kind of guitar solo on this album, and a poppy, catchy, but ultimately shallow sound. Clocking in at three minutes, this is actually one of the longest songs on the album. Up next is Photograph, which is probably one of the poppiest songs on the album, yet also one of the best. The hand claps are a nice touch, and the backing vocals really tie the song together. The song is pop rock at its absolute finest. The aforementioned Hashpipe comes in and throws us a 180, being probably the heaviest song on the album, and definitely the least poppy. While I love this song, it is here where I begin to have a few complaints. One, the whole vocal melody guitar solo thing is really getting old by the third track, and it doesn't seem nearly heavy enough for a song like this one. The lyrical weirdness of the Green Era is also becoming increasingly apparent. But overall, it's still a solid track. Island in the Sun is probably the best known song on the album and is one of the only examples of the formula being mixed up, axing the usual distorted but not too distorted lest Rivers remind his fans of Pinkerton guitar, and instead opting to use a clean tone for most of the song. It's also one of the best solos on the album, which isn't really saying much, but copying the vocal melody actually works in this one. And Mikey Welsh's bass line, one of the grooviest in the whole Weezer canon and so much fun to play. I wish he could have been bassist for more than just this record. Sadly, it's at this point that the album stops being well-crafted pop perfection and the common complaint become apparent. Don't get me wrong, I love this album. Some of the melodies and hooks in this second half are great, but that's just it. The ideas are there, but the songs really aren't. Knockdown Dragout is probably the best example of this. The vocal melodies through the whole song are absolutely gorgeous, and the harmonies complement them perfectly. But once again, we get a weak solo, and as pretty as the chorus is, it really does sound more like a pre-chorus, like it's building up to something, rather than the thing the verse was building up to. And like I mentioned, even when I get this song in my head, I often end up singing the hook to something else on the second half with it, because the second half of this album just blurs together. Amazing hooks, but the songs... I don't know. Something's obviously missing. Songs are good, but it doesn't feel like they're done. Many of the aforementioned Summer Songs of 2000 seem more complete, really, though they are less catchy. And after the initial backlash towards Pinkerton, Rivers wanted something safe. I'd at the very least say that this album is worth checking out, if you can find it cheap. If you don't mind that the songs don't really have any emotional depth and just want some hooks to stick with you, then definitely buy this one. It will not leave your head for a very long time. <laughs>